There are a ton of terms that get thrown around when we talk about optic specs. Sometimes they're used correctly, sometimes they're used interchangeably, and sometimes they're just downright confusing. In this video, we are going over some of these terms, what they mean, and why they matter. Welcome back to the Swan Fox Optics YouTube channel. And before we dive in, don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe. It makes all the difference to us and we appreciate each and every one of you. All right, jumping in, we have three major terms that we are tackling in this video. Eye relief, eye box, and exit pupil. Each one of these concepts is not only important to understand when talking about optics, but they are also very distinct from one another. Eye relief is the distance between the ocular lens and your eye that when measured gives you a clear, unobstructed sight picture. So what I mean by that is, the ocular lens here and your eye when you look through it, so it's the distance from here to here that you can still see through the optic. This is probably the most common term, at least in my opinion, but it's also the simplest. How far away can the optic be from my eye while still being able to see clearly through the optic? This measurement can vary greatly depending on the type of optic and the model of the optic. For example, our Warhorse 1 to 6 has 3.5 inches of eye relief, while the Trijicon ACOG 4x32 only has 1.5 inches of eye relief. Don't worry, I'm not trying to bash on Trijicon. The ACOG is a great unit, but it's also known for its less than ideal eye relief. LPVOs, prisms, red dots, all boast a variety of eye relief and how much you want or how little you can get away with is entirely up to you. The next major term is exit pupil. Exit pupil is the width of the beam of light that is coming into your eye from the optic. The larger your exit pupil, the more gathered light coming into your eye, and the smaller the exit pupil, the less gathered light. You can calculate the exit pupil by using a relatively simple equation, and that's taking the objective lens size of an optic and dividing it by the power of the magnification. As a general rule of thumb, the higher magnification an optic has, the smaller the exit pupil will be. What we're gonna look at right now is a, the visual representation of exit pupil of the term that we're talking about. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little black card and I'm gonna place it over this blue tape. And that blue tape is just the measured out eye relief um, of this optic on the stock, or on the cheek weld, sorry. So I'm gonna place that down there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it down. I'm gonna take this flashlight and I'm gonna shine it directly into the objective lens. And what we're gonna get when we have that card over the correct amount of eye relief and that light is a perfect little circle on the card, and that is the exit pupil. And so that's that measurement that we talk about, but that's the shaft of light that is being collected by the optic and being shined back into our eye. And so as we increase the magnification of the optic, that, that little beam is gonna get a lot smaller and a lot tighter. And so now you can see as I do that again, that tiny, tiny dot in the middle is what we're looking at, and that is the exit pupil at the maximum magnification on this optic. Um, we are working on a Warhawk uh, 525. So the higher the magnification, the tinier that's, that exit pupil measurement is going to be. And so hopefully you guys can see that and what that looks like. And that little beam of light is going to be where my eyeball is if I'm, you know, behind the, behind the stock with a good sight picture. So yeah. Aside from determining the amount of light that comes into your eye, exit pupil also provides us with the amount of left to right and up to down room for error we have when our eye is behind the optic. A larger exit pupil will be more forgiving if our eye isn't perfectly centered, while a smaller exit pupil will be less forgiving and require us to be much more precise with our head position. Lastly, we have the term eye box. Eye box is like if we take the last two concepts, eye relief and exit pupil, and put them together to create a box behind the optic that determines where our eye needs to be in order to use the optic effectively. This gives us an idea of how much front to back eye relief and how much left to right exit pupil wiggle room our eye has to view the sight picture properly without obstruction. More eye relief and a larger exit pupil will result in a larger and more forgiving eye box, while a shorter eye relief and smaller exit pupil will result in a tighter, less forgiving eye box. The eye box isn't quite measurable the same way that our eye relief and our exit pupil are, but that's kind of the imaginary box that we talk about when we say eye box and it can be helpful when considering purchasing an optic. The last note that I wanna leave you with is that despite all of the forgiveness and room for error verbiage we use when talking about these, you will get the most precision and repeatable shooting results when you try to get your eye in the exact same position 
dead center behind the optic each time. This can be a tall order, which is why having some room for error is nice, but when we set our rifles up correctly, this can greatly improve our ability to get our head positioning as consistent as possible. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you found it helpful in defining some of these terms that we throw around pretty easily when talking about our optics. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, leave a comment below. I promise you I do read them. Whether I should, that's another question. See you in the next one.